Hello and welcome to the first litter of 2020. We have some wonderful sterling boas and some crazy looking hets. It's a very exciting litter and one I've been waiting for for four years. Hi! 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 Welcome to our channel! Hello! Hello! If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Hit. Smash it. Smash. Smash it. Smash it right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Hit. Yes. Smash. Smash it. Smash. Okay. Smash. Wonderful, exciting. And in this video, I will show you how I take care of my snake babies. So I think I was so excited about this that I f forgot to turn my microphone on. So now I have to do some voiceovering. Yay. So um, I wanted to show you firsthand how I take care of my boa babies from the moment they're born. So at this point, I haven't touched any of them. I'm about to basically take them out and show you step by step what I do. Now. First we'll speed it up since I have no idea what I'm saying and now we're going to pull the snakes down. So here you get to see for the first time along with me this lovely litter. Um, first thing we gotta do is take Aphrodite out and uh, when a snake gives birth sometimes they'll be protective of their babies but Aphrodite was wonderful the whole time she let me just take her out. So I'm going to take her out and put her away, and <clears throat> around the end of the video you'll see what I do with her to uh, clean her. But now we get to take a look at these wonderful babies. It's very, very exciting. Um, sometimes you work on projects, and from the time I got into BOAs I've been starting on like eight year projects, and now some of them are finally just getting to their four-year point where we're seeing the results of raising babies and then putting those babies together and having more babies. So it was a very exciting day. I uh, Since the sterling boas are new and not a lot of people work with them, I wasn't really sure of what was carrying what genes, so... The day was exciting and it was also caused a bit of anxiety because I had to learn about them and figure out like from the guy who produced them and from other people uh, which ones were carrying what genes because like no one really taught me how to do this. Like I never had somebody that showed me how to breed boas or how to take care of them. All the experience that I have is hands on from just doing it myself. So, and I always recommend to anyone that gets a boa to find the uh, complete, the ultimate guide or the complete boa constrictor guide. It was written by Jeff Rohn and it's my favorite source of material to go to. Uh, and read and learn about boas. So that's basically been my boa bible, and I've had a few boa friends. There's uh, Morph Endorphins. He sold me some of my first boas. Another guy goes by Strictly Scales. He's been really nice too. I want to thank um, Boa Canvas. He's the one that I was able to buy the Het boas, Het Sterlings from. And uh, one of the greatest things about this whole experience was actually being able to talk to Jeff Rohn and he helped me identifying some of the animals because he knows so much more about them. And there really are. There's so many people that know so much more about the snakes than I do. I'm really just kind of doing this out of my third bedroom. But it, it really is a, something that brings a lot of joy in my life and I, I love doing it. But I like to take each snake individually and rinse them all and make sure to get all the uh, gunk off them. I also believe that through doing this, none of them seem really terrified or anything. Sure, they might not be happy, but uh, it's their 
basically first day alive and they get some time being handled. They're used to me rinsing them. And then any time like in the next few weeks that they're dirty or anything, if I have to clean them, it's not as much of a shock because this is basically how their life has started. And um, I feel that getting the hands on right from day one makes a big difference throughout their lives. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go to the kitchen and start rinsing them. Now, lots of people do different things when it comes to their babies. I've seen uh, some people, they leave them in a bin with water. Others just kinda leave them alone till they shed. What I'm doing here, it really takes a long time. And uh, I'm not saying it's better like that you should do this. Personally, this is what works for me and with a lot of things. You're going to find there's certain things you like to do or certain things other people like to do. And you just got to see what works and what doesn't work. And hopefully you want what works. This is what I've basically been doing from my first litter onward. And I think that it's given me good results. The only snakes that I've lost have been snakes that aren't doing well physically, like there's something wrong with them, they're not breathing properly, or they're just a little bit off. But of all the snakes that have looked healthy, they've all survived and done well. So my reason for rinsing them all is two things. First, I get all the gunk off them, because anytime you have snakes sitting around with extra material around them, it's it could get dirty, it could have germs, it could produce mold, it could do all sorts of funny things. So the same way that I wouldn't want a snake laying around in poop, I don't want them laying around with like the membrane all over them. So I take each of them one by one and rinse them and it ends up taking a long time. Like this video was about an hour and a half before I sped it up and changed things and whatever. This first rinse makes a big difference because right from the moment they're born they're used to me holding them cleaning them, and uh, they face their fears a lot faster. So, um, none of them have been nippy at all. None of them seem full of uh, yolk. So, we have a very nice, healthy litter. Couldn't really ask for much more. We got uh, 18 healthy babies. All of them look like they are breathing fine and strong. They're already able to crawl out of the sink. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Bouncy. They have like a like a slime on them that takes a little while to get off. I need it up. I need it up. So there you go. That's.
This one I believe is, well, I don't know if it's a hype or not. There's another sterling for you. Here's the fifth and final patternless sterling. This one looks awesome. The lighting here sucks. So if they have this, um, if they have like a sack hanging off them, I go right to here. I go so there's like a bulge that'll hopefully mostly go back in. So once it passes that bulge, I'll just go and cut it. So this extra stuff is not really going to be absorbed, but that stuff might be. So I'll leave that much hanging out. And then all the snakes that kind of have a little bit of that hanging out will eventually absorb it. Focus. 
Looks like it's a plain motley. I don't even know if this is a motley. Yeah, it looks like a motley. some clean water, make it a little bit more uh, moist. And this is this is what I've done for all my boa letters so far. So first we have our sterlings. This one kind of has, I don't know, because this looks like the normal sterling just doesn't have the spotted tail. Well, it's interesting because this one doesn't have spotted either, it fades. And then these two have kind of the spotted tail. Interesting. Yes, yes, thank you.
just one line almost to the bottom with a few spots on top and they have these like interesting shaped head stamps that they all seem to kind of have it's very interesting very good Thanks everyone, hope you enjoyed that. I will make another video after they shed. So I basically put them in a container and give them some water and then they will hang out until they have their first shed and then we will feed them. Yay! Oh, excuse me. So anyways, I probably should have done this a lot earlier, but forgive me, I was playing with the babies all day. So now I'm going to take mommy and give her a nice little warm rinse. She has always been nice, so they can be a little different after giving birth. But um, she is a little bit on edge. But we're going to take her to the sink and give her a little, give her a little rinse. And then set her up. But there we go. There's mama. So I'm going to take her to the sink. Uh, we're gonna put on some nice warm water, not not really hot, not cold. Same as for the babies, a little bit warm. And I'm gonna just give her a nice little rinse. So this is Aphrodite. So here we have Aphrodite, just gave birth last night or t this morning, not sure, but uh, she did a wonderful job. We got 18 perfect babies. She's nice and clean now. I uh, totally disinfected and cleaned uh, the home she uh, laid her babies in and now I'm going to put her in a fresh one with some fresh water and we're going to be offering her a meal. Not now, but probably tomorrow or the day after. Woo! Okay, we got a light. Let's calm it down. Turn off this light. I'll turn off the sensitivity of the light. Here we go. There, nice, romantic, and whatever. Uh, so, I, I spent the whole day just playing with the babies, 
I got absolutely nothing done and Ariel's about to get home. I had a uh, lot of wonderful positive people. Thank you to everyone that is uh, of the five visual sterlings. I'm not sure. And I'm sure that we got a hypos. I'm sure that we got at least one sterling. I don't know if I have any hypo motley sterlings. I thought that I did, but uh, it turns out that six of the snakes just look really crazy. Apparently they're just, I talked to Jeff Rohn, so thank you Jeff Rohn for being kind and helping me out. And uh, to the very few people that were just really nasty, like know-it-alls, I don't know what to say to you, but it's not how you treat people. <laughs> So, um, you obviously didn't watch my video on being nice, so maybe you should watch my video on being nice. I'll stick it up in the corner, and maybe you'll learn a lesson. Um, we're all just learning, we're all just trying to have fun, or some of us are, so everyone that really loves working with uh, snakes, and works towards a long project like this, this feels really good and I hope that everyone working on projects gets to see uh, their hard work kind of pay off and honestly the, the thing I'm the most excited about is just being able to uh, hold and play with them so I was kind of playing with them all day today which now I'm gonna give them a few days to be alone absorb if there's anything uh, hanging out of them and uh, we'll make a video after they shed, but it's been really exciting. I'm really, uh, I'm really happy too that here, like you get to see this size to me is the perfect size for a snake. I didn't feed her, I didn't even feed her once a week. I fed her every two weeks and she just kind of took off and got to a wonderful size and now I'm going to feed her a few uh, smaller meals, some medium rats, and then after that I'm going to go back to feeding her once every three weeks, a large rat. And she's good on that. <coughs> this was actually my first ever just perfect litter where there were no slugs, there were no stillborns, 18 fully formed healthy babies, no solidified yolk syndrome, nothing funny. None of them were even in their sacks. They were all out wandering around, so. Really happy with this litter. So, yay! So we'll say goodnight to you guys, and I'll have a video up with the snakes as soon as they shed. Okay? Have a wonderful day. Yeah, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Now make sure you click circle. Yeah, click the circle. Yeah, I do. And then watch this video or this one. No. Yeah. No. Yes, it's not that hard. Which one appeals to you more? Is it this one or is it this one? <laughs>